Thank you. Guys. I'll let you guys introduce everyone else that you have up here with you. All right, I'm Drew Rosas. I am the uh, co-creator, co-writer, director, along with Nick Summer, who also acts in it, as you guys know. And we got... I did everything. <laughs> <laughs> Under my supervision, he does everything, I tell him. Uh, we got uh, Max Williamson, who plays Danny. And... Kate Carlson is our special effects mastermind. Yeah. And Kevin Ross Murphy is our production designer and art partner. on drugs right now, so. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna just start out, and uh, I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say that the book of Billy is pretty goddamn amazing, and wanted to know how you approach designing that character and the look of that killer. Um, I guess, I don't know, it's weird. I, you know, you watch all these classic, iconic horror movies, and I would previously done Blood Junkie, which some of you may have seen with Drew. Yeah. Which I had a blast doing, it was so much fun, and then I was kind of like sitting around thinking, gosh, man, you know, we're all like, oh, it'd be cool to make my own iconic killer. Like, what would that be? Just sitting around, and I was like, yeah, this is kind of like what I came up with, and designing uh, Billy Haskins, or, you know, our killer, um, I don't know, it was weird. It just, well, I mean, I made the mask out of actually a suitcase because I was kind of lazy and I didn't want to stitch leather. I was like, I'm not going to do that. So I went into a thrift store, found a sweet suitcase, and I was like, okay, I'll, you know, I'll stain that and I'll cut here. This is kind of nice. And like the handle is actually the chin strap of the mask. So it was kind of weird. But I mean, so designing was, you know, it just kind of happened. I had an idea and I wanted it to be an antique umpire kind of look, you know what I mean? Because I thought that would be cool and we combined the classic baseball slasher and, you know, horror movies together, and so it's sort of, you know, sort of a work in progress along with everyone. Did it go through variations over time? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, this is certainly a work in progress. I brought Drew, I was trying to get him on board, I was like, dude, want to help me on this movie? Like, he's like, no, not, I mean, he's out in L.A., but yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm going to make you half partner, and I'm going to let you write some of this with me. It's going to be 50-50 partnership. Uh, so I brought him on board, and uh, you can talk a little bit about me bringing you on. Yeah, actually, like the the whole like ma mask. I was on the fence, and then he showed me. Uh, no, no pun intended, but uh, he um, he showed me the mask and the weapon that he made just out of in his kitchen. And when he showed me like the bolt action blade, I was like, all right, I'm flying from Milwaukee. Let's do this. <laughs> and uh, talk about a little bit of the locations. Was it written with these locations in mind? I mean, especially one that comes to mind is the bus, that, that, that broken down bus that Max gets in. Was that in the script? Did you find that? Did you know about it before you wrote it? Oh man, that bus is awesome. I, I actually was searching all over. I was looking at Google Maps for a pond about the size of a baseball field. I was looking everywhere. It was at my grandparents' cabin, which is one of the main locations, that little cabin we go to. Shout out to my grandparents. My grandma's in the audience tonight. Yeah! Um, yeah, so we shot that there, and I was, you know, Google mapping, like, and I just, it's weird because I'd walk out into the middle of the woods, and I'd be like, okay, it should be, if I get off this road, and I start walking, and I start walking through this woods, and I'm, like, in the middle of nowhere, it's actually kind of getting weird, you know, and I'm looking for these ponds, and having that one was just a swamp, worthless, but I saw this boss in the distance, kind of like he runs into it, and I was like, oh, what the hell is that, man, this is, and then I started getting freaked out, because I'm, you know, that's when I decided maybe you could make a scary movie during the daytime, because I was like, in the daytime, but in the middle of nowhere. So I was like, this is crazy. I go into it, and I was look, you know, constantly looking around, like, it's freaky, man. That bus is seriously in the middle of nowhere. It's in trees. I don't know how it got there or when, but I found it because, yeah, searching for the ponds for that. But other locations, uh, grandparents' cabin, um, where's the, the actual pond was? The, the pond was in Wauwatosa. We kind of shot all over Wisconsin. We were in... Racine, we're in Kenosha, we're in Wauwatosa, a lot of Milwaukee. We shot in Nina, we shot, we shot, oh, we shot one little bit in uh, Illinois at Evan's uncle's house, underwater stuff, and then we sh shot up north in Pickerel, I don't know, kind of all over the state. And then we did pick up, like a handful of pickups in Los Angeles. Remo's Corner in Kenosha, yeah, I mean, all, kind of all over. So it's really a, it's really a Wisconsin feel because it's really, it's everywhere, so. And how about a little bit about the tonal shift? Because obviously it starts out with fun slash film, and then it gets pretty serious and, and pretty dark towards the end. And uh, how did, was that something originally intended? 
it did kind of come together, and just even working with the actors who had to kind of play that entire arc. Well, we really love the psychological aspect of it and layering things, having all the different layers to characters and, um, and like the plot lines, stuff like that. So it's one of those things where um, we always really liked trying to play with, uh, I don't know, the, the flashbacks and all this stuff, but at the same time we want to make it fun and funny throughout, so we add in a bunch of jokes. But I think that um, we always really wanted it to kind of end on a kind of gruesome and twisted twisted note, you know, kind of take you by surprise a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we wanted it to be really depressing at the end, where everyone just feels bummed out and just <laughs> not the whole train. Who had a traumatic Little League experience? Do we not? Not really. No, I know. People ask that a lot. It's like, I mean, not really. It just, they're like, well, obviously, you've had bad experience in sports. And we're like, I, don't, I don't like sports, but I mean, I was, whatever. I mean, it's more into skateboarding, I guess, but whatever. I, we don't have any problem with sports. We love sports, okay? It's not a sports hate movie. It's a sports love movie in a weird, twisted way. Audience, anyone got any questions? Shout them out if you got them, because it is a little hard to see hands. Okay, uh, the, for me personally, I feel like this was like a really original story, and Nick had kind of given me the rundown on it a couple years ago when you guys were just getting started, and even then I was like, wow, that sounds like nothing I've ever seen before, and like seeing it now in the final product, I'm, I'm still really impressed, even though I've been excited for it for so long. So like, how did you guys come up with like this idea of the underwater baseball chain-powered, Graveyard thing. Is that? I've yeah. never seen anything like that. I thought it was really incredible. First off, thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's weird when I like. I don't know. How, I don't even control what's going on up here sometimes. You know, after you. A lot of it's in dreams, and I'll wake up and be like, oh, "Dude, good work, man. You did awesome." <laughs> you know, so I gotta give credit to my brain a little bit. Sometimes it just does its own thing, and I just let it run, man. It's awesome. I, I thank you for most everything it lets me do. <laughs> like I think with, visually with like the actual follow through on the idea of all that business with the underwater baseball diamond graveyard like how I, I'm assuming that was a lot of special effects sort of stuff maybe I don't know but like how did you guys kind of follow through on that like what are some of the I don't know how did it work what like how did you come through with uh, the underwater stuff was actually really really insane I, originally when I had the screenplay and I pitched it to Drew he's like this is awesome a couple friends are like oh, you should just bury him in a field or in a on a baseball field because you're never gonna do this this will never work yeah Especially I, I wonder budget. how you're gonna pull it off like I didn't think it was we didn't work. either I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I remember trying to ask things I was like Dude, how does this work? Like, okay, even, like, we'll make it happen in the movie. I was confident in that. People were like, no, dude, it's too complicated. Don't do it. But I was like, no, we can do this. But I was trying to just wrap my brain around in reality. Like, how does this chain system work? And he was, he's like, dude, it'll work. He's drawing diagrams on paper. And he's like, there's a cinder block buried under each body. And the chain goes up through the cinder block, comes up. Attaches around the body, so when it pulls in, it pulls them down, and then they kind of just hover in there. But I mean, we didn't really end up shooting it in just a bunch of different spots. We did all the underwater stuff in some locations, and then we had these other pond locations, and it was just ridiculous. Yeah, we were in a pretty just the actual pond is a disgusting swamp. It's really filthy, and so like I'm swimming in this thing. Our good friend Rob, who plays the pizza guy, is like swimming in this. He, you know, he's in there like half dead and. It was pretty filthy, honestly. I mean, wasn't, we weren't sure like we were going to come out of that pond with some weird fungus. There is an episode of Monsters and it's coming out with all those slides. The parasites are in this now. Uh, we'll... <laughs> Anyone else got any questions? Shout them out. This is the second time now you've worked with kids, and they always tell you don't work with animals and kids. So your experience from Blood Junkie working with the one child actor, did that help? with this one or oh we definitely they said again for sure don't work with kids <laughs> so we just had to cast 14 kids this yeah. time. <laughs> an entire other baseball team that they play against <laughs> actually the blood junkie experience was different like that was actually really really difficult um and it was one of those things where we we found this kid to do it and he was really into it but then when he started delivering the lines it was like this crazy just deadpan delivery and i was like what this is terrible how are we going to do this 
And he, he was like severe ADD, but um, then we just, I remember right after we shot with him for a couple days, we just had this crazy interruption. And we were like, what are we going to do? And it's like, let's just make him super creepy through the whole movie, and then it'll work, because it's like deadpan delivery worked out. And then for this one, we were like, all right, now we have more kids. Okay, we need Little Lee. But we ended up, and the craziest part was we shot all of the adult footage first. We did that, um, and we cut it. We actually edited everything, and then we went back and revised our script for the flashbacks because we wanted to add more things to them and kind of help with holes or different problems we were having with the rest of the footage. And so then we were put to the task of casting an entire baseball team of people in Wisconsin that had to be actors to some level and also had to look like the child version of the rest of the movie we already shot, which was like ridiculous. And it came down to like the last kid. We had just enough kids try out and somehow they looked, exactly. they looked exactly the same. It was ridiculous. <laughs> but um, yeah, like the little Allison is so blows my mind. She's perfect. Um, and I remember we did this this uh, online casting thing. We looked at a hundred different kids in Chicago and Milwaukee area trying to cast someone for Nick. And there's like the one kid, and he's like, "That looks like me. That's exactly what I looked like in my um, in my elementary school picture." And then. It was the only kid that responded from our entire cast. It was the one kid <laughs> out of 100 kids. It was the only one. He's like totally into it. Just worked out somehow. And then for some reason, we had to shoot two shoot days with all those kids and the baseball stuff. And it was so smooth. It was the smoothest days we did. I don't know what happened, but they were amazing. Yeah, especially with our main uh, little kid, Sebastian, who plays little Billy. We're just like talking to his mom. Yeah, we just want to fake um, drown your kid. <laughs> we tie him up and we put him in this makeshift dunk tank that we built. In a dunk tank we built ourselves, homemade, like from scratch. <laughs> and, like, yeah, it was cool. It's just a giant uh, water tank. We cut the top off. Like we could put your kid in here, right? Like they're cool with it. He, and he was so pumped about it. I thought we should have maybe had you know someone standing by who was some kind of paramedic or something. But we're just like, oh, it'll be cool. <laughs> we got this weird Metcalf looking guy, he'll clearly pull him off because the movie is a problem, Now, how about uh, Hank and Max? Obviously, you guys had to work closely together. For, so, um, you, you've had special effects done, in your, or you've been doing special effects for a while, so that's your history. Have you been cast before, having a head cast? Uh, no, this was the first time I've had a head cast, so that was actually the first time I met Hank here uh, in Green Bay. Uh, so that was quite the experience. There's actually a video you can watch. Uh, I don't know if that's on the website yet, but you can, I think, see it on YouTube or it's on YouTube. Um, so yeah, that was a blast. Your entire head gets covered for like a half hour in plaster. You can only breathe through your nose, except for when he's got his fingers in there. So that's a little, that's a little creepy. But uh, yeah, that was, that was quite the experience. Um, had a great time doing it with these guys. Um, and you know, Hank, all the, all the the bodies you saw in the, in the pond and all the blood and, and guts and gore, cutting heads off, that's all, that's all Hank. Uh, so that was a real treat to get to work with. Um, I'd never experienced anything like that before, so, so that was pretty awesome. And Hank, what was your relationship work, working with Nick and Drew about? Did you approach them about, we should do a kill this way, or did they have the kills written and then you just had to adapt them to make it work? No, they had it all written uh, prior to my coming on board. Um, and they just said, this is our budget, this is our script, can we do it for this? And we ran with it, so what you see is, it was a lot of hard work. What was your favorite effect? Uh, well, the beheading. I think that, that was, it was I, had, I hadn't seen, this is like one of the first movies I've never seen any footage from. So normally I'm like seeing dailies or, you know, I'm with it, you know, get to see some of the editing, so. I was pretty nervous coming on. I, they were saying, "Oh, it's great, it's great," but I was—I'm always uh, pretty self-conscious about all this stuff. But I—I I really liked the beheading because we had problems with it when we actually did it. Um, it was raining. It was like all of us were tired, and we originally had the, the blood tubes that come loose yeah. from for the slit. It was supposed to start on the one side and then slowly go around. Um, and the blood tube had come loose, so it just kept, all the blood was just pouring down on, onto his pants. So we had to fix that really quick and, and pull it, you know, basically out of our, out of our ass. But <laughs> it, it worked. And, uh, but in the process, uh, the camera, the, the, the DP was like, uh, you know, where's his blood going to go? Because he had the camera and it was very expensive. 
and we're on we're, we're actually on a sawhorse in the back of a truck driving on the road instead of a four wheeler. So we'd get going and it would start raining. We'd have to start over. So all of us are pretty short on that day. And um, he, the the DP wanted to know where the blood was going to go. Well, you never know where blood's going to go. And we said it's going to go. So he kind of prepared while well, it went a lot further than what we thought. And he got all of the camera lens and. That was it for that day. He was done. He, he, <laughs> he, he grabbed his toys and, and walked away, and we just looked at each other because we still had to film. And Drew was a trooper. He's like, well, you can get blood on my camera. So <laughs> away we went, and, and it was, you know, working with these guys. I mean, it's I've worked on a lot of really big feature films and very small ones, but this honestly was the best crew. I've never seen this group, you know, people work so hard that could just jump in and do things. I mean, this guy here, uh, he was doing everything. And I was just amazed. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. So if I ever do another film of my own again, I want this crew, and I've been saying that over and over again because it, it's, it was amazing. So these guys rock. Now, would you tell us a little bit about everything since you did it all? Uh, obviously, period piece. You got 80s and 90s doing the production design. What was your approach on doing that? How did you establish the look of the film? Uh, the Blood Junkie was such a specific timepiece. Uh, I wanted to make sure that this read very clearly as a 90s. Something about the 90s was vaguely strange, not quite right. I think we really captured that. Uh, my my back never hurt so bad as during this movie, but I've made a full recovery. Um, and uh, the cave was a uh, paper mache mostly, and uh, a lot of mud that I dug up next to the garage that we built it in. Uh, just reclaimed lumber, and uh, we burned it all in 50 gallon drum at the wrap party. <laughs> How did it burn? Real nice. Super smoky, actually. Very toxic. Super toxic. So, sorry to the ozone for that. We had the yard sale with the lot of props and stuff. Yeah, we got rid of a lot of the props in a yard sale. Yeah, we made we made most of our money actually on this entire movie on selling the props off at the yard sale. We're selling little kids things and their parents weren't real happy. Here's a cool bag with some a blade in some nails in there. Here, go play. Ten dollars. Do we got any other questions from the audience? Will there be a soundtrack album? Because drinking is indeed a friend of mine. And I'd like that song. Yeah, soundtrack up there? Yeah, I don't know how that, they have that. There's a soundtrack. That's a request. No, this guy, that's me. I kind of co-wrote that song, but off a life experience. But yeah, he wrote that song. Yeah, Nick, Nick was like, I got this great idea for a 90s song about drinking. Here's the lyrics. And he like wrote them on this piece of paper and then just left. I was, he like, was in Milwaukee. <laughs> Or he was in LA, and then I just was like, all right, I'm going to record this thing. So I just like wrote it, recorded it. That was great. Right. It was Nick's song. <laughs> yeah. And they just amazing voice. They do have shirts, posters. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're selling merch. Anybody who wants merch, we got some really good stuff. We got Blood Junkie t shirts and hoodies. Two t shirts for the first time ever. I don't know if you guys know this, but it was originally Rocky Trails. We changed the name when we went to Troma. And we never had shirts for uh, Blood Junkies, so we just printed those out last week. And they're looking pretty sweet. This is one right here. And we also have... <laughs> we also have the Billy Club stuff. Danny's uh, can opening sound effect Yeah, we have uh, the Billy Club stuff. Um, really cool t-shirts. And we're just trying to raise some money to do our final sound mix. We got a guy in LA that's going to hook us up with a really, really good sound mix on like a half million dollar studio. And so we're just trying to raise a little cash. So we have this good deal, but I don't know. We'll grab some merch if you guys want something. We've got some posters up there too, so. Yes, please step upstairs, visit them, visit the other filmmakers. One more time, let's hear it for the cast and crew of Billy Club. Thank you, thank you, my friend. Thank you for showing up. Uh, yeah, my girlfriend's selling the merch up there thanks to her, so yeah, go up and say hi to her. She's very friendly, she's very nice. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you.